How does the rotation of an object depend on the torque applied to it? What causes some things to be harder to rotate than others? This is rotational dynamics. Many in introductory physics classes study only the physics of particles. Particles can't rotate, but real objects do. This lab will give you a good start toward understanding the physics of things that can rotate, like this soccer ball. Our system consists of this rotating arm attached to a rotary motion sensor. The sensor measures the angular velocity of the arm. We attach these masses to the arm to slow it down by increasing its rotational inertia. The farther out they are, the harder it is to rotate. We wound a string around this pulley that is connected to the axle of the rotary motion sensor. This, this allows us to apply a torque to the axle. The string goes over a second pulley that is attached to a falling mass. The tension in, of the string applies a constant torque to the axle and the arm, causing them to rotate. We'll vary the torque for each trial by changing the mass attached to the end of the string. We need to know the masses and dimensions of the parts of our rotating apparatus. There's a place in the lab right above the data table for you to write these down. The rotating arm has a mass of 0.027 kilograms. Each sliding mass is 0.075 kilograms. The length of the rotating arm is 0.381 meters. The radius of the pulley it, where the string is wrapped around is 0.024 meters. There's one other measurement you'll need for question five, so you might want to write it down there. Each sliding mass is 0.16 meters from the center of the rotating arm. We'll ignore the mass of both pulleys, the axle, and the screw. Their masses and dimensions are so small, they don't have much rotational inertia. We'll also neglect any torque from friction in the axle and pulley. Both are very small. A trial looks like this. First, we wrap the string around, making sure it's wrapped around the top pulley. There are other pulleys on this we could have used with smaller radiuses or radii. And then we're just going to release this from rest after we hit start. So we'll collect a little data first, and then you'll see it move and you get a nice straight line. And we stop collecting data after it hits the ground. The main part we want is that straight line uh, with a pretty constant slope. So that's one trial. For the additional trials, we're gonna add another 50 grams. So I have 50 grams here now. Now I've got 100 grams or 0.1 kilograms. So I just wind it back up. So this will be trial two. Hit start. I don't like it, that's swinging. Then we just add another 50. So I take this 50 off and add 100 instead. So total, this is trial three now, total of 0.15 kilograms on the string. Oh, I didn't hit stop. Here we go. Here we go, start. Not sure if I want to add much more mass to this. It's really rotating fast here. We don't really have to let it go all the way down, but why not? We'll live dangerously. So I hit start. There we go. And then finally, trial five. We've got 0.25 kilograms oops, on there. You can see the Slope of the line gets steeper every time. Oh, still running. Here we 
we go. So now we have five trials. You're going to have to get the angular acceleration for each trial. Well, let's go back to run one. How do we do that? I just uncheck these other runs. And now I'm displaying one run. If I wanted to look at run two, I can click it. And if I wanted to get rid of run one, I could click there. So run one, we can extend it out if we want a better look. I want to select just this part of the graph to get the slope. So down here is the selection tool. If the hand was orange, then I can move the graph around. If I click on the square, now I can select that part of the graph and select linear graph here or from that tool down there. And so the slope M is the angular acceleration. And so you'll need to do that uh, for the rest of the lab. In the analysis section, you'll complete the data table by calculating the net torque on the system. The net torque is the product of the force times the lever arm. In this case, the force is the tension in the string, and the lever arm is the radius of the pulley groove where the string was wound. It's important to know that the tension in the string is not the weight of the hanging mass. The hanging mass is accelerating downward so the tension must be less than the weight. There's kind of a tug of war going on and the weight is winning. It's got to be greater than the tension. The equation for the force of tension is provided in question one, but a dedicated physics student would use a free body diagram of the hanging mass to derive this equation. The next task is to create a graph with the net torque on the y-axis and angular acceleration on the x-axis. The slope of your best fit line can be used to discover Newton's second law for rotation. The analysis questions will help you with this. Once you're done, a good test of your understanding of this lab would be whether you could predict the outcome of a new experiment. And so here it is. I'm going to change the mass, put something much less 0.015 kilograms. So it's going to fall really slow. And I'm going to this time rele release it from a known height, 0.56 meters. Can you predict how much time it will take to reach the table? You can check your answer by timing the fall in this video. Now, this is a tough challenge. You may want to work with somebody else on it but you should be able to do it with the basic ideas from this lab. So here we are at about 0.56 meters. And here we go, I'm gonna release it. You can time it from the video, start. It's getting there. Boom, it hit the table. So if you can predict that time to within oh, half a second or so, that's pretty impressive. Good luck.